Life is full of lessons and so is photography. In this video, I'm gonna show you my first staged photo shoot with the Canon EOS R and share some lessons I learned with you. Let's go. All right, you're a beautiful person, you're a good person, and if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. I am so excited with the Canon EOS R and the progress I'm making, the things I'm learning. And I've been doing food and drink or cocktail photography recently, and I just wanna share with you some of the lessons I learned on a recent trip to the 4th Street Market in Santa Ana, where I worked with a restaurant called Mar, owned by John, who's a friend of mine that I've worked with in the past, and he set up some acai bowls and some poke bowls for me to shoot. it has embedded within it there's a food beast kitchen where they can do filming or have kind of uh, reserved for private parties and so John reserved that for us to shoot his his food and so I was super pumped to be able to use that space and so that leads to lesson number one lesson number one has to do with being flexible and always using the best light so I had in my head it was gonna be cool to use this indoor uh, filming area it's almost like a sound stage they have lights up above and so I went inside I set up a strobe light I had just added a Godox 8200 to my V862 C and I was cool I was thinking it'd be cool to use these two flashes or strobe lights in the inside area but the images were just coming out kind of flat a little bit dull and uh, I was frustrated so rather than get stuck and try to force a situation I started to think about my options and I realized outside there's a patio and it was beautiful. It was like 5, 5.30, it was getting towards golden hour. So we moved the, the poke bowls outside and it was gorgeous light, amazing light. So lesson number one, always use the best light. Don't use the light that you think you have to use. Always use the best light. In this situation, natural light. And I still added some flash for Phil um, and to give it that, the image that pop, but outside was the best light and that was the best decision. On a recent video, I talked about shooting cocktail photography, which is really interesting because the glassware that the beverage is housed in actually allows for internal light, light coming through the beverage or through the subject matter, as well as external light. And so in contrast to that, what I found is the bowl, the paper bowl that housed the poke bowl was actually kind of an obstruction or produced some limitations for me. And so I couldn't shoot through the side like uh, what I found in drink photography is a lot of times the best thing was through the side or up and through the side or I guess from above and through the side. But in this context, I could really only shoot from above. I couldn't shoot through the side since the paper bowl obstructed that. And so that produced a challenge because there's about this much space between the lip of the bowl and then the table or the surface the bowl was sitting on. And so depth of field and having the subject pop off the background that way produced a, a, a challenge for me. And so that was one thing I became aware of is in using the, the principles of contrast, isolation, and focus that I kind of touted in a previous uh, uh, video about cocktail photography, I found that because of the container of the bowl I couldn't shoot through, um, I really had to rethink how to get that depth of field oh, with contrast and isolation being the primary ways I did it with drink photography. Um, and that led me to another discovery, which seems obvious, but color. Color, color, color. So the color of the food matters and how you dress it or stage it with the area around that really matters. So the way I found this out is I went to the patio and started shooting and somebody near me was using some bright yellow um, paper to dress up an area, a table that for something she was working on. And I paid a compliment uh, for, uh, about the color and she said, oh, do you want some? And so I rolled that paper out and 
What I found is the pop of that pa paper with the colors of the poke bowls, which were, you know, the pink of the ahi tuna and some of the orange sauces and the green uh, of the lettuce, the yellow really lended itself to kind of accenting these colors. And it wouldn't work with every type of food, like steak maybe, or potatoes, or actually the acai bowl had cooler colors like the blue, the blueberries, and the raspberries. And so um, I actually ditched the yellow paper. And so you pay attention to the color of the food and what you're gonna put around it as context to bring out those images. So always use the best light, keep the color of the surrounding area and the context in mind, and then composition. Composition was a huge learning for me uh, on this one, and that's uh, in the Canon EOS R electronic viewfinder. So when I put up the camera to my eye, um, I found that I was drawn into the photo. And this is just, um, with the with the the handiness of the screen on the back sometimes i move the camera around and i i compose that way um, but i found when i put it up to my eye it blocks out everything else all the peripheral data and all i see is the composition and i'm drawn into the image the emotion the vitality of it um, and so i found it's better to compose with the camera up to my eye even though I can use the viewfinder, and yeah, sure that's advantageous if you have a high shot and by tilting the screen down you can see a composition you couldn't otherwise, or a very low shot where you put the camera near the ground and um, uh, short of laying on the ground there's no, no other way to see the composition without the flip out screen. But I found that putting the camera up to my eye was the best, um, the best approach for me for composing uh, these food photos. And then the Canon EOS R really goes to town because you can move the focal point with your thumb while the camera's up to your eye. I've mentioned that before and I love that. I really, really love that. It's very handy. I'm growing to rely on it. As a matter of fact, at a recent um, gig, it was kind of a nightclub scenario. Um, it was a literary reading and I had a 5D with me and I, I was trying to move the focal point with my thumb on the screen and it just wasn't happening. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's, I'm spoiled by the Canon EOS R. Um, so the other thing to remember besides the Canon EOS R's uh, the touch and drag focal point is um, you are seeing a real time read of uh, your adjustments for shutter speed and for aperture. So as I'm making those adjustments, I'm seeing how light or dark the image is. I'm seeing the, the approximate exposure I'm going to get and I love that. I love being able to dial that image in and rely on that um, through the electronic viewfinder. So that's been um, a boon for me. A boon? Is that a word we say anymore? That's been a, a, a great advantage for me with the Canon EOS R is being able to use the touch and drag focus on the screen and also the electronic viewfinder giving me those um, accurate instant reads of the exposure. And that's it. I love this experience. I had a great time. Um, John is great. Um, I think there are two other people in there, Dahlia and Glenda. They were great. Um, and I have to give a huge shout out to my friend, my buddy Pablo, who was there. He's from Buenos Dias Imagery, and he was capturing behind the scene footage. So everything you see video wise in this vlog of us shooting uh, was created by him. So I thank him for that. And that has been awesome. So I am looking forward to doing more and I just really value what I'm learning on this journey. So glad you're with me. So if you like this video, if you uh, dig it, subscribe. Click the bell, get those instant notifications, leave a comment below, interact, ask questions. I'm really excited by the people who are along this journey, whether it's with the Canon EOS R or they're just on this journey with photography. Um, so I love your comments and uh, just, to, yeah, interact and uh, hit me up on Instagram, West Creasel Photo. Yeah, see you in the next video.